live stream. So before we get started today, remember, you can come on by seven days a week. Monday through Saturday, we are open 9.30 to 5. And Sunday, we're open 1 o'clock to 5. So today, we are going to be talking about probably a animal that you haven't heard of, but it's one that is kind of interesting. We're going to be talking about bone-crushing dogs, otherwise known as borophagines. Uh, they were a, a, they're an extinct group of can Canidae, uh, so they are a true type of dog. And they lived from about 36 million years ago all the way up until about 2.5 million years ago. Uh, they are in the class Mammalia, order Carnivora, family Canidae, and the subfamily Borophaginae. So their modern relatives obviously include stuff like foxes, wolves, coyotes, jackals, African painted dogs, any of the modern canids. But also they are a member of the broader group of what's called the caniform carnivores. So their other relatives include stuff like bears and seals and such. Uh, these animals, Borophaginae, were found in North America pretty exclusively and they are part they're a member of the three different canid groups of only one that we have living today which is the canine group the other group of canids which we are going to talk about another day are the hesperocyanae which are the most primitive of all basically canids uh they were quite small they actually had retractable claws like cats many of them are tree living animals and they were Kind of weird looking little critters almost sort of similar to a modern day gray fox if you've ever seen one so the borophaginae to get back on track were quite large probably the largest canids ever to live uh epicyon the largest member of the group uh size estimates vary anywhere from 300 pounds to almost the weight of a modern day grizzly bear uh, depending on who you ask and they were about five feet long from head to butt and um as you can see they're pretty tall animals uh they were quite large and bulky almost hyena like with their heads they had very domed foreheads very large powerful jaws uh their teeth had a lot thicker enamel than most modern day dogs uh and then they lived in a habitat that was a lot more forested and denser they also had heavier, shorter proportioned legs than modern day dogs. Uh, they did not, like the Hesperocyanae, have retractable claws, however. Their claws were, like modern dogs, non-retractable. And again, these are large carnivores, and their bite forces likely were able to earn them the nickname, the bone-crushing dogs, for a reason. Uh, we have found a lot of herbivores from the times they lived in with where the bones are fractured open there's teeth marks that match borophaginae dogs and they were very likely ambush predators which is something that canids don't tend to do that often you've probably seen in nature documentaries that wolves african painted dogs tend to run their prey down in endurance hunts they run something until it exhausts itself that's not what these did these did actually something a lot more similar more like what a big cat does which actually does lead to another thing uh around 2.5 million years ago these went extinct shortly before that north america and eurasia uh the bering land bridge formed between alaska and russia and the first feliform carnivores were able to move into north america uh, before that they had been exclusive to eurasia and they were simply more efficient ambush predators than the Borophaginae dogs. And the other thing around that time is that modern day canids, stuff like wolves, foxes, coyotes, also evolved around that time and were able to take advantage of the growing grasslands and the more open environments that have been spreading for the past couple million years there. And with those two predators out competing the Borophagines, um, those bone crushing dogs weren't able to transfer over to those faster prey animals because there was already a predator doing a great job of hunting them and the big cats were out competing them for their old niche uh unfortunately leading to their extinction they are a really interesting animal though i am 
pretty interested in learning more about these i only learned about these a couple of years ago and they're just something that you never hear about you never see them in documentaries and they look kind of distinctive i'm going to zoom in on the drawing i did just to give a sense of scale let's see and as you can see there that it, it i drew it to look a lot more like a hyena given what we know of these animal skulls again they had a shorter snout square jaw and that big forehead that you don't see in a lot of dogs today. Um, so one of the things about these animals is why do you think they have like such powerful jaws to start with? Why do you need jaws that can crush bone? And it's something that you can actually, looking at an animal they look quite like today, kind of answer. Modern day spotted hyenas have some of the strongest bite forces of any mammal. And by crushing bone, they're able to take advantage of food sources that oftentimes other carnivores aren't able to. You can get it marrow and bone, which is highly nutritious. And also being able to crush bone as a carnivore, not just a scavenger, you can take advantage of the entire carcass of an animal. You can really get the, your bang for your buck every time you catch your prey. Because as we've talked about with carnivores before, most of the time when carnivores hunt, they're not successful, so they have to make every meal count. It's why animals get so competitive about their food once they actually catch it. And these animals, you don't see a lot of them. I'm hoping that in more modern documentaries we'll see more of these. Um, but yeah, no. Overall, I thought it was a very, very interesting animal is a good one for just a nice quick live stream um hopefully everyone's enjoying the very nice weather we're having out here